Now, hi everyone, Physics Ninja here. Enjoying one of the last beautiful days of summer here. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna do an applied physics problem. We're gonna determine which beer koozie is the best. And by I mean the best, I mean which one can keep the beer colder as a function of time as it starts to warm up. So let's see what we have here today. All right, I've set up four different uh, things that we're going to measure. First, we have the beer can. We have one can that's gonna be placed in this neoprene cooler. I've got another one that is in a thermos uh, koozie. This one retails for around $10. And the last one is the almighty Yeti. Uh, the Yeti koozie retails for around $25. It's by far the most expensive. All right, so I've got four temperature probes and I've got the measurement computing uh, data logger that's gonna record the temperature. I'm gonna place each of those temperature probes uh, inside an open can, and then we're gonna measure the temperature as a function of time. It's a nice warm day out today, so this should be a really good test. All right, so here we have everything all set up. Uh, let's go downstairs, grab the cans of beer, and start making the measurements. We're gonna go with an all-day IPA. I'm gonna have to drink these after, so I think this is kind of a good choice. All right, so I initially set up the temperature probes. I tied them together, and they're all touchy, touching each other. Uh, so they should be measuring the same temperature as our initial temperature, where we're gonna start the experiment. All right, here's our initial temperature. Uh, they're all probably within one degree of each other. Actually, even just how they're oriented with respect to the sun and how much sun they, they get um, can change these numbers. All right, so we got channel one, no koozie. Channel two, neoprene beer koozie. Channel three will be the thermos, $10 version. Channel four is the Yeti, $25. And this one's for me. All right, let's go check it out. It's been about five minutes so far. You see the timer? We've got our four temperatures. Remember, channel one is the top left over here. That's just the bare can, currently at 50.4 degrees. Channel two is the neoprene koozie at 45. Channel three is the thermos at 40. And surprisingly, so far, the Yeti at 41 degrees. See quite a lot of condensation so far. Man, those look really good. All right, we're approaching 10 minutes now. We're gonna go check the uh, temperatures. I'm on my second beer. Again, this test shouldn't last over a long period of time. In reality, uh, the maximum amount of time a beer should spend in a koozie is maybe 15 minutes. See, the bear can is almost at 57 degrees. Uh, channel two, neoprene koozie, also almost at uh, 50 degrees. The thermos cool is at 42.02. And the almighty Yeti is at 42.3. Those two are holding steady. Well, I just wanted to show you uh, some of the data right now. If you look closely, we have channel four. That's at a lower temperature than channel three. So again, channel four is the Yeti. And it's now cooler than the thermos. And the time is just over 15 minutes. Kind of interesting. All right, since it's the middle of September, I've noticed that the sun is getting blocked by uh, the corner of the house over here. So it's creating a shadow at half the table, which was where the Yeti was located. So what I've done now is I've just exposed them now to the same sunlight. So they're all now exposed to the same, uh, they're all receiving the same amount of sunlight. So this is a better comparison. So we'll go back and check uh, what the temperatures are in a couple minutes. At 20 minutes, let's look at channel one is almost at just a little over 69 degrees. 
Channel 2 is the neoprene koozie at nearly 59. And look at Channel 3 and 4. Basically the exact same. All right, folks, we just hit the 30 minute mark. Let's go have a look. Uh, this is really the end of the test. You don't want to put a beer in there for longer than 30 minutes. Let's go see where the winner is. All right, again, channel one at the top is just the bear can. Uh, channel two, uh, the neoprene koozie. Channel three was the thermos. And channel four, slightly better. And the overall winner after a 30 minute test, uh, but really less than uh, two tenths of a degree. Um, not a very big difference. Again, we're at 31 minutes now. And there we have it, folks. That's the overall test. So during the experiment, I showed you the data on the digital display from the data logger approximately every five minutes. But what I wanted to do now is actually just plug this into my computer and download all the data and let's have a closer look at it, right? I took 30 minutes of data and recorded, you know, four different temperatures and this is what uh, it looks like. So again, I generated a plot here of um, temperature on this vertical axis and time here on uh, the horizontal axis. Time goes from zero minutes all the way a little bit past 30 minutes by the time I set everything up. Uh, if we look first at the different colors, the different colors represent the four different temperature probes. So the bear can is the black, the cheap neoprene koozie is uh, the green, the thermos, the red, and the Yeti cooler is the blue. So we first focus kind of on the first couple of minutes over here, this region over here. And the first couple minutes, that's when I put this temperature probe, which in hindsight was probably a little bit too hot because it was exposed to the sun. And then I place it in this cold beverage. So there's kind of a lot going on, right? Uh, the first thing you notice is that the black line is initially the, uh, the lowest one. And then it's the green, the red, and then the blue. And that's simply a result of just the way I'd set it up, right? I initially put... Uh, the probe inside the bear can. The next one I set up was the neoprene koozie, then the thermos, and the last one that I actually set up uh, was the Yeti cooler. All right, so that's kind of this uh, low time limit. Uh, the next thing you could do is, well, just look at what's going on as a function of time. Again, now you can really see kind of this curve over here, right? You can see it's gonna kind of warm up and eventually it's gonna reach the ambient temperature. All right, so if I was gonna do this experiment over maybe a couple hours, uh, you definitely see those curves kind of reach and reach a steady state value, uh, which would be the external temperature. Um, you see the two winners down over here, right? Uh, the red and the blue, uh, <laughs> as we predicted. And in the line, uh, the long time limit here of approximately 30 minutes, you see that those lines are basically on top of each other. And that's just because of the scale that I chose to show the data. Again, there's a very, very small difference, but to the taste, I don't think anyone could tell the difference. Uh, a couple other things that are kind of interesting about this plot. Again, I, I find it interesting that this Yeti was kind of getting closer, right? Getting closer to the red one, right? It kind of kept its temperature. It almost has a very, very low slope here in this five to 15 minute range. Whereas the thermos, and again, it started out uh, the coldest. And again, that might have just been due to the temperature of the probe that I put in there. Maybe it was, anyway, just not quite as warm, at least initially. But both of those lines, certainly after a certain amount of time, they basically follow each other. Uh, the other point that I want to mention, you might kind of look at the graph and look in this area over here. And you notice this little hiccup here in the um, in that blue line, there's a discontinuity there in the, in the slope. And that is simply the point in the experiment where I realized that the Yeti can was in the shadow, right, produced by the corner of the house. And then I decided to move it, and then you can see it kind of follows a different path once I've moved it and I put it in direct sunlight. So anyway, just have a look at this graph. I think it's kind of interesting. Uh, that was the experiment. I hope you liked it. Uh, consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, also, give the video a thumbs up if you like it. All right, after 30 minutes, now we're going to complete the test. Uh, you always got to complete the test with a taste test. Uh, this is the regular can, oh, just by the feel of it. You know it's really, really warm right now. That is not drinkable. Our second one is the Neoprene Channel 2. This was at 65 degrees. Noticeably colder. So the key is, can I notice two tenths of a degree? Uh, both of these are just under 51 degrees right now. Let's pull this out. Basically the same temperature. It's 
still quite good at 51 degrees. No human can tell the difference between the two. Um, one other comment to make about these ones are just the form factor. So this one here is much, the walls are much, much thinner uh, than the Yeti. Right, the Yeti, the circumference of this uh, cylinder over here is considerably bigger. Actually, you'd expect it just from having thicker walls to perform bigger, but certainly the data does not support that. And this one's actually much easier to hold in your hand. Same temperature.